Yeah, Shalom Israel. Yo, what? Go to America. Shalom Israel. Of Sam Aquaire of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge out here in Trinidad. I'll be holding on the class tonight for Officer Yakad, who's on his way, but he might be in a little late. So myself and Officer Michael will be holding on the Lasharan Kodash. Right? We'll be touching back on the Hebrew alphabet that um, Officer Yakad was doing on last week. So we'll touch back on that. We will do um, the 18 nations where we'll be able to pronounce the 18 nations properly and to write them in the Hebrew also. Right? So we'll be holding on this Hebrew session until the Officer Yakad reach. Right? With that, um, I will invite Officer Michael up to the board. Salam, Yom Tov, Shabbat Shalom to all the brothers. Yahweh Shema Latan, Ba Shem Yom Shai to all the sisters. All right. So today, um, we'll be doing over. We'll doing some review on the Hebrew alphabet. All right. Of course, um, we know today is Friday, which is the Lashawan Kwadash. That is the Hebrew class, the Holy Tongue. All right. So Officer Michael will be writing on the board, and I will just explain as we go along. All right. Of course, we have classes every day of the week, um, except Tuesday. So like here, we have classes Monday to Wednesday, Friday to Sunday. All right. But today is Friday. Today is the Lashawan Kwadash where we'll come and you will learn this language, your language, black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man. But before we get into that, all right, um, I will read from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. All right, because of course, many people today don't know who the true Jews are. They don't know that blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians are the true Jews. And of course, the Christian church will not teach you your culture, your history, your laws. You understand? And of course, they will not teach you that you are the true Hebrew Israelites. Your tongue is the Hebrew, the Lashavan Kodash, right? So what we'll do, we'll go into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, right? For thou, thou meaning thou speaking to the so-called black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man, right? For thou art a holy people, and of course, holy being um, meaning separate, right? So the Lord is letting you know that you are a holy people, a separate people. Unto the Lord thy God, unto the Lord your power, right? The Lord, excuse, the Lord had chosen thee, the Lord had chosen you, so called black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man, right? To be a special people unto himself. The most I chose you out of all the nations on the earth, the most I choose blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians to be a special people unto himself. And we will see. Um, we'll continue reading and we'll see what the Mosai did for us, right? So the Mosai God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people, meaning above the Chinese, above the East Indians, above the Syrians, above the Africans. The Mosai have chosen you to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You understand? The Mosai have made you a holy people, holy meaning separate. You understand? And right now we're going to go into the Lashawan Kodash, the holy tongue. You will know is the separate term. We will go into the, the Hebrew alphabet, right? You will understand that the alphabet, that there are 22 characters, and these characters also have meanings to each character, right? Um, as you could see on the board, the officer Michael just right, right? That is the Lasha Wan Kodash, meaning holy tongue, and you could see that the, he wrote the the Lashawan Kodash in Hebrew, right? Many people may see this for the first time. People looking in might not understand it yet, but we will go into the alphabet. And then from there, you will see how we will put words together. You understand? You will see how you could put the 12 tribes of Israel together, right? Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Um, also, we will go into the 18 nations, right? Where you will see also um, how you could put use this Hebrew alphabet and put the 18 nations together, right? Just like how you use the normal English alphabet and put the letters together to make words. We will, see, we will go into that with the Hebrew alphabet because, of course, this is our language. You understand? Most people might just hear Hebrew Israelites and feel, well, that is a nationality. No. Israelite being your nationality and Hebrew being your language, 
so-called black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man, right? Of course, we'll go into the 18 nations, as I was saying before. We will see who the Chinese is in Hebrew, right? Which will be Mawa Abba. And of course, um, Officer Michael write it out in the board, so we'll see how to spell Mawa Abba, which is Moab, in, um, what we call today as the Chinese. So we'll see how to put these words together, right? Um, on the board, we have the Lashawan Kodash. You will go through it. You will just point it and show you what is the Lad, the Shah, the Wan, and the Kodash, right? Good. Right, so. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Lashawan Kodash, right? That is it up in the English. So we'll go down to the Hebrew. Of course, the Hebrew is read from right to left. You understand? So here we have the La, Sha, right? Point, point the, the L and the W. So here we have the La. Sha, one, right? Kwa, dash. That is how you pronounce pronounce it in the Hebrew. That is how you speak it in the Hebrew. La sha one kwa dash, right? So we'll erase that and we'll go to the Hebrew alphabet. Of course, new people coming in or or people that come in to teach Hebrew in the classes for the first time, it is good that we go over the Hebrew alphabet from time to time because it's be a good refresher because sometimes. Once you're not consistent with the Hebrew, you tend to lose it. Just like any language you're learning, once you're not consistent, you will tend to lose the, the jits or the basics of the language, right? So the Hebrew alphabet, it might look complicated, because I remember myself, when I was doing, um, trying to understand the Hebrew alphabet, it was a, a bit tricky, because remember, it's something new that they're coming into. You understand? But of course, with continuous practice and practice, um, you'll be able to understand it better, you'll be able to say it better from the top of your head, you understand? And of course, on Saturdays, uh, when we do the Sabbath service, you will see brothers um, reading the Holy Bible in the Hebrew, you understand? And of course, what we always do in the ICPK on that commanding general, Yana, we also translate what we read in the Hebrew into the English. So, you might hear after class that, you know, you might hear the Our Father pray. You understand? Abba Nawa, Shabbat Shemayam, Kwadash, Shaya Shamka, you know, and so forth. And then after it is read in the Hebrew, of course, we read it in English so you will understand what we say. Not like the Christian church, you go in the Christian church and you hear these people speaking a foreign language and nobody knows what they're speaking. And there's not even an interpreter, interpreter to interpret it for you. But of course, with the Hebrew, in the Israelite school, we will teach you the Hebrew. We will teach you how to speak it. We will teach you how to use words, how to use present tense, past tense, how to use the connectors to connect the words together, of course, and so that you could get back your language, your history, and your heritage, right? So we're going into the first five letters of the Hebrew alphabet, right, as a refresher. Right, so for some Michael is getting it ready on the board. As you can see, if everybody's seen it clear, make sure if you have your if you're close by, you have your pen, your paper, your book, make sure you're taking notes. You understand? Go over your notes when it is done. And in three times you'll be able to say the Hebrew alphabet from the top of your head. Just like how um, most people will be able to say the English alphabet. Right? So of course this is the ancient Hebrew. This is the Hebrew that we speak, the Hebrew Israelites speak that was passed on from Adam throughout our generation. You understand? Until this day, we are able to bring it to our people who do not know this language, the Hebrew language, which is their language. Right? Alright, so we're going into the first five letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So on the board, as you can see, right, we have A, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha. Right, that is the first five letters of the Hebrew alphabet. A, right, is the first one, as you can see, the point on the board to show them, right. That is A, right, then we have Ga, A, Ba, Salakia, then we have Ga, Da, and Ha. Right? And of course, if you watch the previous classes, right, you will understand that each character, there's a meaning to each character. We, of course, we will just touch on them, right? Because we want to get into the, the 18 nations for you to understand the 18 nations that is in the Bible. Because most people, when they read the Bible, they do not understand what role um, these nations play today. 
in the scriptures. So you read it and you feel it's a fairy tale, it might feel it's some past storybook or whatsoever the case might be. And that is not so. These nations are living, living out prophecies in this Bible today. Right? So we have A, right? Which, or which represents the ox or the bull. Right? It also represents power or authority. That is the A. Right? When you go to the bar, right? Right? That represents a tent. Right? Represents also the tent, like, like for example, what the, um, the native Indians will have right we have now the ga ga which means gather right it represents it shows or represents a man's leg but it also means walk together right that is the ga so no difference how um in in when when we use our cell phones we will see some some of these emojis right and they will be able to say that what this represents you understand what that represents you could use the emojis to speak you understand send a text to, to your brother or sister with just emojis alone they could understand fully what it, where you're coming from no difference from these hebrew characters you understand so we have the we have the the ga which means gather represents a man legs or means walk together we have the da the da represents a door or a doorway as you can see how it's shaped, it represents entrance, that doorway. You understand? And from there, we have the ha. Right? The ha is like um is like a man arms raised, right? In 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 this motion. Right? It's like a man arms raised, which it also signifies um which also signifies a man arms raised in power. Right, so the first five letters we have so far is the A, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha. Right, that's the first five letters of the Hebrew alphabet. You could rub off that and we could go on to the next five. You understand? And as we go into the, the letters, again, we'll go through it not too fast and not too slow either. So, anybody viewing in for the first time, you could take notes so that when you finish, you will fully have. The Hebrew alphabet, right? So we're going on to the next five um, characters. Right, the first five we had was Abagadaha. Now we're going on to the next five. Right, as of Sam Michael getting them on the board. Of course, make sure that you tune into these classes. These classes are streamed every Friday. Right, from 7 p.m. Any information that you need concerning, any more information you need concerning the Hebrew language, of course, you could contact our camp leader, Officer Galawan, right, at 290-5173, where if you want a copy of the Hebrew alphabet, you don't want to learn more, you understand, you could tune into the classes every Friday, also you could go up on, on www.iscpk.com, you understand? Where you could see also get a copy of the Hebrew alphabet, you could um, see the books used in the school, you understand, be more familiar with the events, the classes that it have in your area because we have classes throughout the world in the ISUPK. Right? So now we go into the the next five letters. We have wa, za, ha, ta, and ya. Right? Now if you notice something with the ka, the ka is not pronounced as a C-A-R, like ka. You understand? You have to put that emphasis on the C-H, like Like you're going to bring up, like, like you're going to bring up a spit, but you're not going to spit on nobody, right? So you're, you're saying ka. So it's wa, za, ka, ta, and ya. Right? This is the next five of the Hebrew alphabet, the five characters, and of course, as we say before, the um 
the characters they have their meanings and definitions as well you understand it's not just simple just like how we're seeing it right so we go into the wa the wa we just run into it again right the wa represents a crutch or a peg right it represents a crutch you know some people like if they get a foot injured they use the crutch to help them in, in mobilizing from one area to the next. Right? Back then, I believe the that same crutch was called a peg. You understand? You could use it for walking. Right? So the wa, as you see the symbol here, it represents a crutch. The za represents a hoe or a grabbing hoe, as we, we will call it, right? That now is what we'll use to till the ground. You understand? A hoe or a grabbing hoe. Right? That is za. When you look at ka, ka represents a fence or a wall. That is what that character represents. Ka. Right? We have ta. And if you watch ta, you will see that ta represents a basket. If you look from the overhead view, you will see the four. If you draw it from the side, right? Draw it, if you draw it from the side, um, this one, eh? Okay, right. If you look at if you look at car from the side from a basket view, it will be like this, right? You understand? Right. So the three the three points you see in there, of course, on the opposite side of the basket, it will have the next the next <laughs> yeah on the opposite side, right? Yeah, you get you come right there. Right? So the opposite side of the basket will have the next um, the next reinforcement as we will call it to hold the basket together. So that is where the, the ta comes from. You understand? Represents um, a basket. And of course the ya represents a fist closed. That's just what the ya represents. Right? Mm-hmm. Right, a fist closed. It just represents a fist closed. So we have the next five of the Hebrew characters: wa, za, cha, ta, ya. Right. So that is so far. That is ten letters of the Hebrew alphabet. We go into the next five. Yeah, can you use that then? And we're going to go into the next five. And of course. Once we complete the, the Hebrew alphabet, we will go into the, the 18 nations, right? Where you could see um, and understand these 18 nations with their English names, what they are known as by or by today. You will know, you will see the biblical names, you understand? And of course, you will see their names in, in, in the Hebrew, both English and how it is written. You understand? So we go into the next five Hebrew characters. So Sam Michael is getting it on the board. Of course, they have they also have the Assyrian Hebrew, but we're not going into that today. You understand? We'll just be doing the ancient Hebrew. We're touching on the ancient Hebrew alphabet. Just continuing from what Officer Yakar. I done last week. You understand? You also touched on the 18 nations. So we just a refresher. I mean, Salakia, you touched on the 12 tribes. So we're doing a refresher on that also. And of course, we'll be touching the 18 nations. So when you read your Bible, you will understand who is who in the scriptures. You understand? And always remember that the Hebrew is written from right to left it is not written how we will write in our english papers today from left to right you understand that is of course the oppressor way of writing but our way of writing the most high as i read before in the book of Deuteronomy, we made us separate you understand this language is written and understood from left to right right so now we have um the next five letters right we have Kha, right? La, Ma, Na, and Sa. So we have Kha, 
la ma na sa. You understand? And of course, ka representing an open palm or hand. You understand? An open palm or hand. If you look at it from this, from the back view, you see like the fingers. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Right? So we have ka. Yeah, like that. You understand? So we have ka. We have la. Right? La represents a staff or a shepherd's rod. A shepherd's staff, which is used to guide. You understand? For example, you have sheep, so you use that to guide the sheep. You understand? You could also use it to teach a staff or to bind. That is what la means or represents in the Hebrew. Right? We have ma, which when you watch it, Carefully, you will see like it had the kind of waves effect to the top. You understand it represents water. It also means chaos or might. You understand? So we have ka la ma. Then we have na. If you watch na carefully, you understand you will see that it, it represents, you will understand that it represents um, a seed being sprouted. If you watch, you're seeing how it's looking from the bottom with the hook, right? Like a seed coming out from the ground, and then it have the leaves, right? You understand? A seed sprouted, right? It's not. And sa is a scale or balance, right? So we have ka, la, ma, na, sa, right? So that so far is 15 characters of, yeah, can I it off? Of the Hebrew alphabet. Lashawan Kodash. You understand? So we go into the next five. The Hebrew alphabet have 22 letters. 20, so, so like here, not 22 letters, but more or less, more 22 characters. That is the proper and correct way to say. 22 characters. You understand? And again, the Hebrew characters all have their meanings. They all mean something. You understand? The Hebrew language, if you notice so far what we have gone through, it, it have a nice flow to it. It have a nice, a nice song. But the Hebrew language is also very powerful. We have the Abagadaha, Wazakataya, Kalamanasa. You understand? That is the 15 characters we just did. And we're going on to the next five. You understand? And if it's not a part of the, the ISUPK and you start to follow the classes online, you understand? You start to reach out to the different camp leaders in your areas. And you come to these classes when you see the brothers in the school praying the Hebrew. You understand? You will see how powerful it is. And not definitely not like the Christian church. You understand? Definitely not like the Muslim mosque. You understand? You will see how powerful this language is. You understand? Now we're going on to the next five characters. Right? Of the Hebrew alphabet. Again, so-called black man, Hispanic man, and native Indian man, woman and child. You are the true Jews. You are the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. You understand? And this is your language. This is your tongue. Lashawan Kodash, the holy language, holy tongue. Right? So we have the I, Pa, Taza, Kwa, Ra. Right? So now the eye, of course, represents the eye, the human eye, the pupil of an eye. That is what it is, the eye. You understand? Pa represents an open mouth. You understand? We watch how it's shape, it represents an open mouth. Right? And it, it means to open, to blow, to scatter, or to grind. Right? That is what the pa represents. We have which represents a trail. 
right if you watch how the the straight line with the so-called z's right the straight line could be if you watch it like from from this view like a mountain view and then you're watching the z's like a trail you understand it means trail or journey you understand it also means to chase or to hunt taza so we have i pa taza now we go into kwa and if you watch all the choirs if you when you start to understand kwa it means sun rising you understand it also means to circulate revolution or time you understand and if you watch how the choirs you will see it looking like the sun if you watch them like the horizon from the beach like from a beach view right you see like the sun rising or setting in that view and the little line is like the reflection you understand or of the view right so we have kwa which means sun rising time or revolution you understand we have the ra which want to look like a number four but it's not a number four you understand that is a character in the hebrew alphabet it is it is the side view you can say it from the side view of a man's head you understand so just like how officer michael stamp here watching his view from his head you understand we'll have it like this right it's the side view of a man's head that is what the ra represents you understand so we can erase that we have i pa taza kwa ra right that is the next five um characters of the hebrew alphabet so that was um 20 characters we have two more to go and then of course we'll be getting into the 18 nations in the bible and then we will go and touch um review what officer yakar did on the um, the 12 tribes of israel right of course stay tuned to our classes anybody new coming in you understand anytime you bounce up this video stay tuned to our classes we have classes every day throughout the week in israel in the isupk there's classes every day of the week in trinidad here we have classes monday tuesday wednesday friday saturday and sunday you understand the classes that we will have um in trinidad here right will be the history class on monday we have the brotherhood class on tuesday brotherhood which is also son of master sisterhood on wednesday we will have the law class you will, where you will come and learn the laws of your people black man hispanic man and native indian man you understand because of course without the law any nation without laws that nation will be in chaos you understand um we have no classes in trinidad on tuesday but on friday we have the lashawan kodash you understand the holy tongue the hebrew language and of course saturday is the sabbath service where we will be reading the hebrew and also translating it in the english we'll be reading the holy bible in the hebrew translated in the english so you can understand you understand and on sundays there's a class with our camp leader officer galawan the scripture breakdown classes you understand where you could come and ask a question you get your scriptures broken down we could fully understand and embrace your culture and your history black man hispanic man native indian man right these classes are all geared up to taking you from one stage to the next to taking you out of this hellish world this hellish condition you understand bringing you into this this way of life and this part of righteousness you understand um now we have the sha and the ta right the sha represents um wait. that's not it the sha okay but that's about the sha and wait in the end in the the hebrew now no, it's confused me too something oh slack in it right we have the sha and the ta yes no
cool. Yeah. It's shit. Right? We have the sha and the ta. The sha represents a tooth. You understand? A tooth. Like a teeth in the head, but a tooth. The sha represents a tooth. And of course, the ta. So I guess. Yeah, go ahead. So that people can get the Yeah, no, sir. Mm -hmm. Like that? Right. You understand? So the shah represents a tooth. So you can more get the, the visual on it here. You understand? And the, the ta, just as you see, it's very simple. It just represents two sticks crossed. That is what the ta represents. Two sticks crossed. Right, so we have the sha and the ta. Right, so of course, that was the Hebrew alphabet, the ancient Hebrew. You understand? We have the Abagadaha Wazahataya Kalamanasa Ipatazakwa Rashata. You understand? That is how your song. The Hebrew alphabet. You understand? Of course, um, once you, again, once you're new coming in, make sure you take your notes so that you'll have the Hebrew alphabet locked and loaded. You understand? And as the time going by, the officer will bring out um, different classes so you could fully understand and grasp more on the, the present tense, the past tense. You understand how to use the connectors in the Hebrew. You'll see us using some connectors in the Hebrew. You understand, but of course, he will bring out in his classes how to properly um, understand for you who is new to properly understand how to use the connectors to join the words, to join the letters from the alphabet to make the words um, in the Hebrew. Right? So now we're going to go to the 18 nations. Right? We're going to take our time and scroll through the 18 nations. So when you're here you're reading the scriptures or you're coming to our classes here in the ISPK and you see, and we, you might be watching online and you might see we use words like Mizraim or Kush you understand? Magog you will understand who they are and also you will understand how to write it in the Hebrew and even if you see it in the Hebrew you understand you will be able to know who or what that writing is you understand? so now we go in, into the 18 nations yeah yeah no sweat um, just something, hold on. Not long to. Okay. Long to in here. We go start, we start over time. We go start over India first, right? India? Yeah. Oh. So we're going into the 18 nations and their names they are known by today. So what Officer Michael will be doing on the board, he will put the, the 18 nations, but we will be going through, of course, going through them one by one. Right? You will see what their name is today. You will see their biblical names. So when you go into the Bible, you will see what these nations are called by their biblical names. You understand? And of course, we will write in the Lashawan Kadash. You understand? The Hebrew name. We will write it out in the English. You understand? Just like how we had the Abaka Daha, as we was just going through. And of course, we will write it in the Hebrew. So once you see it in the Hebrew, you will know. Well, okay, this talking about the Chinese, or this talking about the Japanese, or so forth, or so forth. You understand? And as the time going along, as you're learning and you're coming up, even if you don't fully grasp the Hebrew yet, at least at this starting point, you will understand the, the nation's biblical names. You understand? That is very important, especially in this time. You understand? Especially when you come into the ISUPK under commanding General Hanna. Is going to learn the, the nations or the races names, the biblical names. So when you read the scriptures, you will understand who is who again in the Bible. Right? So we're going to the, the 18 nations. Right? You will write the, the name of the nation today, how what we know them as. Then you will write the biblical names, then you will see right the, the Hebrew name in English. Um, already the Hebrew um, 
the Nippon, yeah, you'll see, right? And then already, and then already, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, right? You go write the, the pronunciation of the Hebrew, and then you will also come and um, write it in the Hebrew. So, again, as, as I was saying earlier, you will be able to see, um, how to write these nations in the Hebrew. You will see the pronunciation and the names also in the Hebrew. And again, of course, you will know who they are in the scriptures. Right? You could write on that, right? Write on that Elam there. Mm. You could just not too, not too high, you just mark Hebrew. So you can yeah. see the name today, yeah. the record name, and you could just um Yeah, if you want, you could use the um the blue mark here. Mm -hmm. And you could just underline the um the biblical names, the Hebrew names, and stuff like that. Shalom. Yes, shalom, you're about to Yeah man. Shalom sister. Shalom, sister. Are you going to Are you going to Yeah. Right, cool. That's right, man. Yeah. And then you can mark the... No, you can go there. Right. You go there. And then now we can mark the the Hebrew and underline it as well too. So as as we're well. not going along, maybe we'll just see the difference Come on, in them coming along. Now. Right. So now we have we starting with the we starting with India, all right? The Indians, the East Indians. Right? The biblical names today will be Elam. Right? So when you're reading this, the scripture, they're reading the Bible, and you see the word Elam or Elamites. You know that dealing with the East Indians. Right? And um, of course, the Hebrew pronunciation for. Yes, no, Salah, care one minute. Yeah, the water. Yeah, so the, the pronunciation of the Hebrew for Elam will be Ayalam. I, Ya, Lam. You understand? And to write it in the Hebrew, of course, you will see it here again. I, the Ya, and the Lam. Ayalam. You understand? Of course, when you offer Sam, come, and he should be here very shortly. You understand? You should hear. How to use the connectors? You understand? If you do it in this class, you understand. The next um, class is going to show you how to properly use the con connectors so you can make the words so the words will make sense. You understand? So here we have I, Ya, Lam. You understand? So you see the in India or the East Indians in the Bible, the biblical name is Elam. You understand? I, Lam in the Hebrew. And this is how you write. I, Ya, Lam, or Elam in the Hebrew. Right? We're going on to the next one.
So the biblical name for the East Indians will be Elam. In the Hebrew, Ayalam. So we're going on to the next nation. That was one nation. Right, so we're going on to the second nation, nation number two, which is Assyria. Right, the biblical names will be Asher. Asher, that is the biblical name. So when you're going through the records, you're going through the Bible, and you see Asher, you'll know what it's speaking about, right? And the pronunciation for it, Officer Michael, now finish right it in the Hebrew there, right? The Hebrew again is written from right to left, right? So Asher will be Ashawa. Right? You go touch the letters. A Sha Wa. And you can see the pronunciation for it over on the on the left of your screen. Asha wo. You understand? From there we go into Syria. Right? Again, the second nation, Assyria, Asha. The biblical name Asha Wa in, in the pronunciation for the Hebrew, and that is how you write Asha, our Asha war in the Hebrew. Right? We're going on to the next next nation. Again, it is very important that we understand who these nations are in the scriptures. Because they will be reading the Bible. Or a Christian pastor will be reading the Bible to you and you wouldn't understand who or what they're talking about. You understand? In your mind, you may think you may understand, but of course, you bring the reality of the Bible to you, you will not be able to say, well, this is this nation fought against this nation, or this nation is the nation that has been going to be saved when Christ returned, or these two nations was in war. You understand? Of course, you wouldn't be able to say that because you don't know who is who. Right. You understand? You understand? You understand? Um, and right now we have Officer Yatad. Right. All right. Right. So you'll be um, up shortly. Right. Yeah. Shalom. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. We just went to the eight nations and just the pronunciation. The, the Hebrew. No? So, um, but I was saying that, I know when you come in, you do the, the use of the connectors and stuff like that. Even do it today, yeah. I was just ex explaining you would do it. Like in that class, probably show them how to use the connectors and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, so we have now Syria. Right? The biblical name for Syria is Aram. Pronunciation is here, what is pronounced Aram. And in the Hebrew, Again, always from right to left, we have a ram. A ram. That is how you write a ram in the Hebrew. You understand? So we went over India, Assyria, and Syria. This is Syria, we only know. So this is how you write in the Hebrew and the pronunciation for it. Right? The next one we are going to go to is the Arabs. So you will see how to write. Ishmael, or Ishmael, in the Hebrew. You understand? And that will be the Arab study. So when you go into the scriptures and you see the talk about Ishmael, 
or the Ishmaelites, you will know exactly who the scripture is talking about. You understand? So you'll be, you'll be now, why is it going to, why is it reading the Bible? Now you can see how these nations fit in their spot or their role. You understand? Through all the scriptures. Again, we did India and Syria, Syria, and now we're going to the Arabs. Only one, one, two, three, four. The 14. 14. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to kind of brief now. Hey, you have it here? No, I'm not even that. I was sure. All right. Yeah, we're just yeah, these brothers doing a hell of a job again. Let me get it up again once more. Some right. So we just jump on to the Arabs. The Arabs, the Alu Akbar. Oh, you say don't Alu Akbar? Yeah, we didn't talk about this so far. Here. Let's watch it from here too so you can see. Alright, to what? So we have the Arabs. Not to be confused um, with a lot of, a lot of with a, some of the other nations because um, the so-called Middle East, a lot of people, persons do understand that there are some countries in the so-called Middle East area that are not Arabs, but people think they are Arabs. So like the Iranians, the, Iran, the Iranians or Iran are not so-called Arabs, but they are really from the Persian and Medes Empire. And so, so those are things that, you know, we had to be harder understanding that knowledge to be able to get that difference between the two. So we have the Arabs, which is pronounced Yashamai Allah. Right? So it's Yashamai Allah. So, we have, again, with the connectors, we have the Ya, Sha, Ma, right? It's supposed to be Yashamai Allah. Yashamai Allah. So, we have, if you're writing it in Hebrew, we have the Ya, Sha, Ma, I. But the connectors will show where these are joined. And we get the proper pronunciation. So it's Yashamai Allah. Yashamai Allah. Who are the so called Arabs? And all these nations were the enemies of the nation of Israel. Come on, come on. All at different periods of time. So at some point in time, the Arabs in the so far biblical history and even the more recent history, because the so called Arabs had a key role to play in our slavery. All right? When I do the research and the actual history, I realize that the Arabs were the ones who built the slave ships that put our forefathers into slavery. Not only that, they not only built the slave ships, but they also themselves had us in slavery in Africa and in other parts of Africa. And have some of our brothers, you know, they would, some of them, they force them to convert to Islam. You understand? And a lot of atrocities have been committed by the Arabs. Namely, you know, they would do the, um, what you call the, not, not circumcision, the castration of the young men. You understand? To have them work as, what's it called, um, eunuchs? Eunuchs. eunuchs yeah. You understand? To protect their women. So they would take our young men, castrate them. You understand? Some of them, they would cut off their penis and their scrotum. You understand? And have them as soldiers to protect their women. That is the kind of evil 
way that the Arabs had and the way that they treated us. All right, so this is the Arabs, Yashamai Allah. All right, so we have that. You go ahead. What's that, my God? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, that is the so called Arabs. Now, as we are on the Arabs, you can also bring out um, some scriptures. Um, who have the Salakit, you get the prophecy where they say you will be a wild man? Salakit. My phone out. So, let me get that. Let me at least get that scripture so we at least get a description of these nations in the Bible. For the audience to know that this is not just something that we just talking out there, but this is actual biblical description of these people in the scriptures, and most of them would be known by their name. Some of them still have their names, but some of them their names have changed over time. I think the references I think he have his hands against every man. Mm. Right? So if you could get that scripture. Right? And also if you could have Sabaria, if you could get the one for um for more. Uh, we're talking maybe a proud. A proud people. Oh, alright, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And so we're gonna get that description of these nations in the Bible. And yet again, these nations don't love us. You understand? And you know we, we have been so brainwashed or so colonized. We love everybody, but everybody hates us. And that, that is, a, is a real hard thing to stomach. You know where, you know when you're seeing your people are being oppressed and destroyed, and we still love our oppressors, despite what. No matter how much time, you know we see and we have the, the written history. We're constantly seeing where we are oppressed and we continue to forgive our oppressors. And they continue to stifle us through all the scriptures. Right? You have it? Right? So we're just going to pull out one scripture before we move on to the so called. Chinese, who is known as Moab in the scriptures. So we have that. So as you are pulling that one, so we have here now the Chinese, Moab, or in the Hebrew it's Mawa Abba. Ma wa a ba. Ma wa a ba. These connectors are as well as the smiley face or the frown face. This is the frown face here. The smiley face connects each um, character and basically merges it and gives it a different context. Yeah, good. So, you had one for the white man? For Arabs? Ishmael? Yeah, good. Bring that one. Genesis 16 and 12, right? Mm-hmm. And he will be a wild man. And he will be what? And he will be a wild man. He will be a wild man. This is talking about the so-called Arabs. Right. And we know that they are blasted as wild people. They're crazy. Right. They're off the ropes. That's right. You understand? Because they will do anything for their cause. Now, it, it's a trait that is not something that is just so. That is something biblical. Just as how it is a prophecy that distinguishes a group of people, is the same thing with the children of Israel. There are certain markers and certain traits that describe each nation and each people. That is why even now, the so-called Jewish man or the so-called um, white man, all the others in the world, they find it hard when they can say that black people are the true Israelites of the Bible. Right. But prophecy and biblical scriptures prove otherwise. I think they know who we are, but just to keep that cloud over our eyes, they were denied almost at any cost. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Officer. Yeah. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 16 and verse 11. They're talking about the so called Arabs, who is Ishmael, the forefathers of the Arabs. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, 
Thou art with child, mm -hmm. and he shall bear his son, and shall call his name Ishmael. And shall call his name? Ishmael. Who is the forefather of the so-called Arab city. Go ahead. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And he will be a wild man. He will be a what? A wild man. Go ahead. His hand will be against every man. Them Arabs always fighting out with somebody. Always. If they fight any war with some other nation, they're fighting war with themselves. Shiite and Sunni. They're always fighting. Go ahead. And every man hand against him. And every man hand against him. The whole war on terror was because of the Arabs. 9-11. And even before that, the Gulf War. You understand? It, it, had, it had too much things. And throughout history, then you had the, when the whole crusades. You understand? The Arabs and them. You know, that the whole crusade in Night Temple and all them things was because of the Arabs. You understand? So there's so much history to show the kind of destructive kind of mentality he, he has and his attitude towards other men. Because the Arabs see you, you is an infidel. You deserve to die. Period. They don't care. Convert or die. And that's how they operate. All right. Go ahead. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And he shall what? And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Them living like lords. The Arabs, they have a, a, a huge stake in the wealth of this world. You understand? Due to the whole corruption. And, and not only that, but the most high distributed certain blessings on them. Because you see, you'd have 12 princes as well, 12, 12 dukes. You understand? And that you would be a wealthy people. Right. And the scriptures show it. The Arabs are a wealthy people. Go ahead, of Sasha. Like I said, like when you check in, when you check in England, right? Mm. So these, these billionaire clubs and them like Chelsea and a couple of them, right? Yeah. They not, you did not own by people in England, but these same Arabs and same England. Arabs, right? You know, and and that all these are key markers that describe a group of people and their traits. You understand? So then. Everybody know these are about these are Arabs and these type of people, but when it comes to the children of Israel, all of a sudden, nah, that don't match. Nah, that you know all it. That shows the evil and disgusting traits of the hidden. Because anytime they realize that these, the world, not, not just the world, but the children of God recognize that they are the children of God, it's problems. That is when we know their kingdom will fall because they will have to give account. For what they did to God's people. Right. And that is the problem. That is the judgment they've got to face. And that judgment coming soon. That unraveling all now. Commanding General Yahana, children of monster posts. You understand me talking about, um, I think it's Alex Stephen A. Smith. Well, the interview he did on the last, uh, I think it was the grill. Mm -hmm. You understand? And he, he dropped out all the podcast and he broke it down. You understand? Really showing how Esau. They, they basically panicking because the, because the eyes of the children of Israel are opening and not just the children of Israel but the other heathens realize that what? Our fathers have told us lies. Right. And those lies are being unraveled every single time. You understand? That was it on that? Or that, was it? that was it? Alright. Most time in Christ. So now we have these next proud blasted bastards. These good for nothing Washpot bastards. A lot of people do don't understand what is a washpot. A washpot is like a posy, a big posy. So I can't say you got slanty eyes. Oh yeah, those slanty eyes, mother so and so. <laughs> I don't want to say the rest, but to water for that. These greasy slanty eye people are some of the most wicked people on the face of the earth. Now the white man up there, the so-called our so-called oppressor, he up there. Easy, easy, most subtile. But when it comes to wickedness, you see them so-called Chinese and the brother not too far. Those Japanese, but these Chinese, them on a different level. Them have a little more eh than the Japanese. Who so-called Moa, right? Which is pronounced Mawa Abba in the Hebrew. Right? These people are a very proud and disgusting people. Go ahead, Officer Barrett. Go ahead, read that. Now, for all those who are listening online, tell me if this is not the people 
that have been spoken about it because a lot of people like to contend and say the Bible not real and you know that is a white man's book. The white man could never write nothing this accurate. And he would never write nothing that he says either. This is the most accurate text ever created and will ever be the most accurate. Right? Go ahead. This describing the so called Chinese. Go ahead, Sabah. The book of Jeremiah 48 and 29. Mm -hmm. We have heard the pride of Moab. We have what? We have heard the pride of Moab. We have heard the pride of Moab. Go ahead. He is exceedingly proud. He, everybody know the Chinese are the most proud people on the face of the earth. Right. Now the white man, he hiding. But the Chinese, they will, they rather die in their pride. And a good example of that is World War I, World War II. I think more specifically, World War II. You understand? Where the Chinese and the Japanese, they, they were proud to death, literally. That they, they had the so-called big thing with honor. You understand? Where you have so much honor, well, like that, that straight up foolishness, that you would take a knife, slit your own guts, you understand? To so-called holy pride. That is the level that they will be. Now imagine if you do that to yourself. Imagine what you do to our next man. Right. If you could sit down, I forget, I forget what they call it. They call it honor killings. Not honor killings, I forget Parakini the name. Sorry? Or so you say that? Parakini? Yeah. Yeah, I forget the term. But that is where, because of pride, they call it honor, but it's pride. They are willing to commit suicide for their pride. Just for that. And they would sit down, take a knife, slit their own stomachs with their bowels, let their bowels fall out, and then slit the throat. Or the wrist. But most of them slit the slit the stomach. And then when they finish slit their stomach, somebody will chop off their head. You understand? What is the sense in that? You understand? So you want to die in your pride, slit your stomach, your guts follow, and a man chop off your head. That don't make no sense. To prove to what? That you die with honor? Nah, that don't make sense. Go ahead. And his arrogancy. Hmm. His what? And his loftiness and his arrogance. His loftiness and his arrogance. When you see them Chinese strutting, and some of them poor and stupid as us. Salakia. And when you walk in their grocery, watch them, the hand behind the back and they're watching you so. They're strolling. Yeah. And I know in their mind they're watching like, watch them nigga, I don't watch him make sure he pick up nothing. You understand? The proud, you could see the proudness in their face. You could see the disdain they have for us. But oh, yet, God. they want me money. That is why black man, Hispanic man, native Indian man, gotta come out. Come out of these nations and come out of their philosophy. Let we build we communities. Let we open our grocery at our liquor stores and everything else. Our food. Them can't cook better than we. That's right. Them cannot. They have there's no competition that they can catch us in. None. And to show you how lofty and prideful it is. You go invent a phone and they will come and photocopy everything. You understand? And in the pride, still try to come and outsell you. That's how that, that's the kind of people they are. Go ahead, read yours. Oh, go ahead, Sasha. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to check like in the last five years. When you check back to like the FISA. The visa on level red, right? Yeah, the visa on level red. And uh, go back and think when they come back when the Chinese come with all the what is called the 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 dish like this stuff, proper and thing. Which one, well, uh, like what we just buy with the noodles and like when they check back all the noodles and all them things, like the macaroni. Kind of chow mein and that kind of thing. Yeah, the macaroni and all the noodles and things. Yeah, really food. And, yeah, yeah. And they take it now and make it. And, and, and that's the thing. Food. Yeah. So they take they they. They, what you call it, they they appropriated our culture. 
and made and and put it on the self and made it their culture. But you see, because we have been destroyed so much and we don't know our heritage, all the other nations feel that is their own. Right. And that's like everything else under the sun. Right. You know, I think my brother brought up that scripture today, talking about the seal of Zion. You understand? What we see teaching today. And to see how these heathens take the seal of Zion, which is the so called the Dawada, which is the seal of David. You understand? That is our the signet of our king. You understand? Of King David. They take that now and they run into what? What they say you call them a star mole. What they call it a um, some witch which they using all of our witchcraft. But they using our signet to, and dishonor what the most hyper. You understand? That symbol. That was something that was represented us as a people. You understand? Every king has his stamp. Right. You understand? And that was King David's stamp. And that was also like, you know, to show that, you know, this is this is his lineage. Just as how every tribe had their signet. And every tribe had their symbol. You understand? The unicorn was who? If anybody can remember, Abu Kusha. That was Ephraim. You understand? Then we have we had Judah, which was the so-called what? What one of the um signet or representation? The lion. Yeah. You understand? Benjamin. Wolf. The wolf. You understand? Simeon. And Levi. Yeah. Levi was the dice. dice. You understand? The Urim and the Churim or something. No, like something different, but that was the dice. That was the cast locks. Right? You use the dice to cast locks. Um, who was the battle axe boy? Um, Salakia. So we had God. Is God? Is the axe? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And go ahead. Simeon was the axe. Simeon was the axe. Dominican. Right? The, the so called Dominicans. Go ahead. Yeah. The unicorn was the, the, the Ephraimites. Right, uniform is Ethan Salakia. And Ephraim showing the unicorn. And I, I mean, we had, we had a thing again commanding General Hannah and all the generals and all the captains. The unicorn is not no fairy tale, you know, um, pixie, pixie dust with, with no horse, with no rainbow over your head. Right. You understand? Right. And that won't have any, any proper understanding of the scriptures. You understand where they could give the proper breakdown. The unicorn was really I try to understand that was like it was it was a special animal. So you have like as you see like a goat or a sheep and the horns will usually grow curved. But I think in this instance it's it grows out and plop. Yeah, go ahead off some yeah, and you know because because of this of of this rare rare occurrence of the horns growing outward this way, you know that that was something yeah and, and it, it plots yeah. it plot into or intertwine into each other, you understand? That you know what that was a special that was like a prized sheep or a prized goat, and that was uni the uni stands for one, so instead of having two horns it was plotted into one so they have that unicorn right right and the tribe of ephraim used that as their signet which was something special you understand and all these are different things that we have to understand in the scriptures where you know we have to understand this is a description of every group of people and each family even within the tribes of their family had their own signet on their own staff you know and all these are different things that help remind us that as a people we had a whole ton of swag. You understand? Everything under the sun. You understand? We had that flavor in it. Go ahead up some of that. Let me get yours. Um, so Judah is the lion. Right, Judah is the lion. Benjamin is the wolf. Benjamin wolf. Levi dies. Levi dies. Simeon is the Dominicans in Batlax. Batlax, Dominicans. Batlax, Dominicans. Dominican. Zebulon. Zebulon. Ships. Ships. That's right. Those were the ships. Ephraim mm -hmm. is the unicorn. Ephraim unicorn. Manasseh is the bull. Manasseh the bull. And Salaki and, and Manasseh. Trust me. I mean, each. I mean, if, if you don't understand this truth, you go think Horasco. And that's what the heathens and this do. They're so carnal in their mind. They rather worship 
the creation rather than the creator. Right. We don't do that. You understand? That is for why fake Israelite groups and those who out in the world, which is the same thing, Christians, you understand? They would see the Dawada say, well, it's Star Molek, but you know, all is um, witchcraft, huh? because they don't have that understanding. These things are symbolisms. That is how when the Mosai's in Genesis said, you know, you have the sun and the moon, you understand, for times and seasons. But they would rather worship the sun and worship the moon. And not the one who created it. Right? Go ahead. Salakia. Manasai is the bull. Manasai is the bull. God is the bull arrow. God is the bow and arrow. And we know that bow and arrow. The so-called native Indians, or they would call them the Apache, which was one of the tribes, they were famous for using that bow and arrow. They were extremely skilled in using that. You understand? Not just in this time, but way back in biblical times. They were crack shot. Like, yeah, go ahead. Even like the and the certain chi chi boy chi boys and chi boys. Yeah, chi boys are the same thing and hitting the target. Yeah. You understand? Them talking about no American sniper. Them them is the original snipers. You understand? Our so called oppressor, which was the so called white man, reading our biblical history and taking all our records and capitalizing it. That's all them doing. The other day I saw, I saw a post with a, um, I think that's on Facebook, with a native Indian man. And the native Indian man, yes, like it, it's a water. Yeah. yeah. That native Indian man, when you look at the blueprint, is the exact same blueprint they used to make Captain America. Right. Same style, same swag. All of the payment types. All are gay, all are gay phenomenon. And that is what our process continues to do. They continue to steal our heritage. Right, go ahead. Um, yeah, we have um, Ruben, Ruben, right, which is the Seminole Indian. Seminole Indians, go ahead. And the symbol is the, the horse. The symbol was the horse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who else we had? Um, yeah. Naftali. Na yeah, Naftali. Which is Argentina to Chile. Argentina to Chile. Right, and the symbol was the deer. The deer. Definitely very fruitful. Right, and then you have Asha. Mm -hmm. Colombia to Uruguay. Colombia to Uruguay. Right, the symbol is the, the vine of the grape. Right, again, extremely rich and fruitful people. Go ahead. Right, and then you have um, Eseca, mm -hmm. which is the Mexican. Eseca, the Mexican. And the symbol was the donkey. Their symbol is the donkey. And again, these things are so prophetic. You understand? And again, we had to give it up to our Mexican brothers. All the tribes. But our Mexican brothers, trust me. I think they, they, they can fit that tati. What they call it, donkeys and um, boro. Boro is, is donkey in um, Spanish. You understand? And they are they work. And the load, the load bearers. Yes, yeah, like the load bearers. The load bearers. It tell nobody. Who could work more than a Mexican? That Mexican is this this beast, the really <laughs> truly. They really fit that. They take the load and the brunt of most of the kingdoms. They are the work horses. They will do work that men will run from. And they do it cheerfully. You understand? So those are the different signets and different things that help describe our people. Alright. Alright, so let me just jump back into these bastards here. Slanty eye bastards. So called Chinese, Mawa Aba. I think you're the finish. Yeah. Oh, you're still alive, peace. Salaki. Salaki, give me. I'll finish you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 So, this is describing Moab, right? We have heard the pride of Moab. He is, he is loft, his, his loftiness. Salaki. His loftiness and his arrogancy. And his pride and his haughtiness of his heart. You understand? So this give this describing not just one person, this describing a nation of people. Right. And we see how proud the Chinese are. You understand? They said, I know his wrath, said the Lord, but it shall not be so. His lies shall not say like it shall not so effect it. You understand? And they just given a, a, 
a brief description of who they are. Take it out one, one more. So that bring us to death. To show you how disgusting these people are. And the most I know how disgusting these people are. You understand? So you saying, what is my wash pot? Right. Now this is Psalms 60 and 8. They also have it in, in Psalm 108 and 9. But Psalm 60 and 8 says, Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. And Philistia triumphed, though, though because of me. So when you say Moab is my wash pot, a lot of people don't understand in biblical times what is our wash pot. And even not so recent times, in our old school, we know what is our wash pot. But it might have been called by a different name. What is probably one other name you might have called our wash pot? So like anybody yeah, like today? Yeah. That would be like a way for a pill or a pill. Or a posy. Or a posy. Those people who don't know is a posy in, in Caribbean style, who, anybody who watching, a, a posy or a pill was something that they would, when you don't have a, a toilet, a flushing toilet, you would sit down on a bucket. It was like a metal pail. Mm -hmm. it could be metal, it could be plastic. Enamel. Or enamel. It used to have an enamel coat, it's with rust. And you would sit down on that and do your number one, your two, your three, your four, and your ten. You would piss in that. You would spit in that. Every disgusting thing you could do, you would do in that pot. And it's called a wash pot. If you had a bed, you would put all your dirty water in that. You would wash off your hand, your face, all your muck. You would wash out that and put it in that pot. And the most I saying that the Chinese is his wash pot. Every filthy, disgusting thing is in that community. And we could see it. Go ahead, Officer Wyatt. There's one thing to touch on mm. the um, catch. The part of the, um, Edom. Let's read that. Yes, yeah, so like it. Right? So I'll read it again. It said, Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Now let's lock here, sir. Mm -hmm. Show you how the nations know one another. Yeah. And the door, the door, there's highly identity in China and Israel. And That's right. Time when Bush went in um, mm -hmm. either Iraq or Iran. Right. And an Iranian take off his shoes and put Yeah, he take off his shoe and put the president. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they consider the shoe mm -hmm. the most dirty, disgusting thing on the planet. Right. That's for the Arabs and them. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is, is an extreme insult for Arabs to take out his shoe and put it there. That is the lowest they can do in their nation. And when somebody do that, they know you disgusting. So Moab is his wash pot. Every dirty stinking thing. Them so-called Chinese, them eating the, the cannibals and all. Them cutting up fetus and make soup. You understand? They will eat a live squid, roll it up. How stupid you could be. To take a squid, roll it up on a chopstick, and shove it on your throat and try not to dead. You, you, your head had to be mad. You eating dog, cat. You eating yeah. lice. Everything, cockroach. Anything that lives and breathes, you eating. Every disgusting, filthy thing. That way I say, Moab is my wash pot. I am so once so disgusting that. Well, to prove your love to your significant other for the Chinese, you have to literally shit in a plate, salakia, mess in a plate, and your partner to eat it to prove that he loves you. That is madness. That's more than disgusting. And that is these people here. The so called Chinese who cook, cook and choice, see Kaifan, or whatever you're going to call it, and give to us. You understand? And they're cooking every other animal under the sun. Right. And give us tea. You understand? When you think it's chicken, it's, it's chai fu kai fan or dog and soy sauce. You understand? That's what we're eating. Dog and soy sauce. And they're laughing at us. Because why? Our people are destroyed. Our walls are done. Our gates languish. 
because we left the most high laws and our leaders have no protection for us. Officer Shah, go ahead. Yeah, and it's one of them animals and them that I, I think was one of them animals that was something for IV, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to write them whatever they want to write. So yeah. when they're trying to see how them people are supposed to, you know, where they, they ride home, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's take any one. Everybody, they're, they're trying to see the, the amount of meat was there. And yeah. they're taking meat. They're eating right now. And so they sell the meat after. Just yeah. that people pick up for them. What they was doing. That's what disgusting them is. Them yeah, don't people, care about nothing. Yeah, people are not eating. Not, not so yeah. right. Nobody eat it. Them don't care if the poison and kill it. All them seeing is profit. I ch- just imagine. You going in a drain. In a, in a sewer. Taking a bowl. And dipping the oil from the sewer, they call it gutter oil. What kind of conscience you can have? I tell you, now nah, saying this go see these people is you go uh, in the gutter, in the sewer, and dip the oil out of the sewer, put it in barrels, strain it, and come out and fry and cook food for me to eat. Boy, I, I doing what the air, I doing what the air around you. I don't want it because you can never be trusted. And that is these people, the so-called Chinese, and these are the people who, who are ruling over us now. You understand? These are the people in our communities cooking food for us. Right. You feel like I trust them? Around my people? Never. All right. So these are the so-called Chinese, um, Moab or Mawa Aba in the Hebrew. Black here. I'm All right. So these are just one of these disgusting people. The other one we have is the so-called Japanese. That is their brother. They are going. So what? Who not very far from them? Right? Them Japanese. Them are little, a little a, mm, less disgusting than them Chinese. A, mm, but they're righty. Them is brothers, yes, that's why. The so-called Japanese. And we know the Japanese are also a very proud people. They are also a very extremely proud people. And you know when you look at um, some of the histories, some of the history of the Japanese, you understand they are very vicious people too. Never to be trusted. All of them, all the is not, not to be trusted. But then Japanese, they want to defend them. You understand? Okay, they also have a, 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 a very disgusting history. You understand? A very murderous people. Chinese, extremely proud. Japanese, extremely vindictive. They're wicked. You know what they say? That, you know, sometimes in the ghetto, you know, when the woman say they're wicked, them Japanese, and Salaki, I don't know if any of the brothers in here who have experience with them Japanese. If you could just give a little brief, you know, Something of, of working around Japanese people. We go after Sabari. Nobody answered. Last project they work on Mitsubishi are in Japanese. Mm-hmm. I remember it. Your address is master to be a trainer as well. That's right. And you work in. And the town sun and building them town sun and down in the Mitsubishi plant. He saw drones flying over here. Mm-hmm. And the train sink down. A black man can't get arrested. Yeah. Why is he getting kind out of precedence? No mercy. All them care about is the bottom line. They don't care about nothing. Walk and dead. 
Walk and dead. Like all them kids. When you're dead, they replace you. All I'm concerned is their heritage and their people. Right. Now, nothing wrong with that in it. You're supposed to do that. But every black, Hispanic, and Native Indian is supposed to be thinking the same way. Right. The bottom line is your people. And that's what we need to keep, keep in mind. But because of this systematic brainwash through Christianity, the so called black, Hispanic, and Native Indian, we lost that. Time for me to wake up and come out of this dream state that we're in. So we have here the so-called Japanese. Another slanty eye bastard. You understand? And yes, they are slanty eyed bastards. Because they come into your country, invade, and subtly undermine and destroy your people. So we have the it's pronounced. I am a one, right? It's written here in the Hebrew as I, ma, wa, na. But it's not I am a one, na, it's I am a one, right? That's the pronunciation in the Hebrew, as the so called Japanese. Yes, son, um, sort of go through if there's any um, scripture for them. I can't find it right now. But Rest assured that they are just as a bastard as their brother the Chinese. Alright? So after the China, after the Japanese, we have no, so like one more thing I forget to mention that the so-called Japanese, their biblical name is Amon. Right. We can't forget that. Amon. So anytime you hear about Moab and Amon. Is it Chinese and Japanese? And the forefather of the so called Moab and Chinese is, if anybody can remember, forefather Lot. of Lot. And Lot was a nephew of Abraham. You understand? And if you, when you understand that backstory of how the so called Moab and Ammon come into existence, you gonna realize they really are who they are because they came from a what incestuous relationship. Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, Abraham interceded to try to save his nephew. The Mosai gone and destroyed the place. When Lot, his wife and his two daughters ran out to try and save their life, the guy blind, the angel gave him a blind through the, the prayers that, um, that Mosai, you know, plead. So that uh, Abraham pleaded to the Mosai for him. They ran out. His wife looked back. She turned up a last soul. Right? And his daughters were alone with him. And they were so distraught. And so um, destroyed in their mind that of the destruction that took place in Sodom and Gomorrah. They thought that they were the only people on the planet. You understand? They believe that. Here what you see that nobody else on them. We can't get no man. I don't know how we could keep we, we species alive. We father name alive. Was to sleep with the father. So the big sister come up with a plan. They got drunk in the father. Go and have sex with him. And get pregnant. The next sister do the same thing. But guess what happened? What is known medically? You understand? With incestuous relationships. To what? Right, the baby is a problem. So when a child has come out of incest, which means you go with um, father and child or mother and child, the offsprings of these of these type of relationships they they, they get deformities. And guess what? The Bible is so accurate. The Bible is so on point. Here what happened. These so-called Moab and Ammon, what do they call them also? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Officer Shah? Call them Mongoloids. Mongoloids. Could somebody please pull up what is a Mongoloid? Now this is not what I say, eh? This is this is actual science. 
So when you pull up, boys, a Mongoloid, and we have these people ruling over us, something wrong. That's when we know we really unlock this. Go ahead. Alright, um, this is Mongoloid. Mm -hmm. right? this, this is just more of our uh, article on Wikipedia, right? Sure. It's saying, one, a member mm -hmm. of a racial classification of humanity composed of people native to North Asia. To who? North native to North Asia. To North Asia, you might say that classification of a race of people. Eh? Go ahead. Native to North Asia, mm -hmm. East Asia, mm -hmm. Pacific Oceania, right. and the Americas. Who is the people living there? As well as their diaspora in other parts of the world. As well as their what? As well as their diaspora in other parts of the world. No, their diaspora, which means all the other groups that come from them who scatter all over. All over. Like their descendants. Go ahead. Right? Two. No offensive, a person with Down syndrome. What? A, no offensive, a person with Down syndrome. They say no offensive, a person with Down syndrome. So a person with Down syndrome is a Kualema Mongoloid. So we have Down, Down syndrome people ruling over me. Nah, something wrong. We have Down syndrome, Salakia, ruling over the children of Israel. People who deform and give somebody characteristics if they have a day of Down syndrome of somebody suspected of Salakia. Mm -hmm. um, offensive, right? Right. Um, meaning the term was offensive. Right. Right. Um, and it related to um, idiot, retard, <laughs> a general term of abuse yeah. due Read to it. due to the association with Down syndrome. Read it again. So like it. Now right. this describing the so-called Asian man, eh? the so-called Chinese and Japanese. So the, the third definition from Mongoloid, mm -hmm. right? They say it is offensive. I just use that term of offense, right? It is um, idiot. It related to idiot, retard, and a general term of abuse due to the association with Down syndrome. Due to the association with Down syndrome. So this Down syndrome people come high over us, ruling. They come in groceries in our place. And watching me with a slanty eye? No. Nah. And Salaki, eh? Let's do more, one more thing. Let's pull up the, the characteristics or, or physical features of Down syndrome. You understand? Go ahead, Officer Barry. Yeah. Uh, this on, on what the um, officer just bring out the. Mm hmm. About who the eye. It's, it's no strange thing, though. Why they don't know what to eat? Yeah. They don't know what to eat, but. <laughs> They're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is it. Yeah. <laughs> is it the name you so dumb. You so dumb, syndrome. You think cockroach? The cat, yeah, squid on a stick, bat. The whole world locked down because all that all, all eating bat. The whole world. Because all that so dumb. All that cat understand that I'm not supposed to eat bat. Yeah, you, you really want you. So, like, I don't know if you have it already. I don't care. Yeah. It's saying here, I just, this is all for the National Down Syndrome Society website, right? No, this is the National Down Syndrome Society. Please, read it one more time where you're getting from. The National Down Syndrome Society website. Go ahead. A few common physical traits of Down Syndrome mm -hmm. are low muscle tone. A what? Low muscle tone. Go ahead. Small stature. Small what? Small stature. Oh boy, hmm, good night. Go ahead. An upward slant of the eyes. Upward what? An upward slant of the eyes. An upward slant of the eyes. Go ahead. And a single decrease 
across the center of the palm. And a single deep crease across the center of the palm. Go ahead. Although each person with Down syndrome is unique, is a unique individual mm -hmm. and may possess these characteristics to mm -hmm. different degrees. Right. So all these slanted eye bastards, small slanty eye bastards, all of them is a bunch of Down syndrome. And this is from the National Down Syndrome Society. So me making up this. And that describing the Japanese and the Chinese. I go watch here and make you beat me, you're mad. You are the big crazy. That is why they, 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 they fear us so much. Because they know they can't stand up to us. That was the quick to pull a gun. The quick to pull a knife or something. Because they know toe to toe, they can't match up. You understand? That is why some of them are so vicious too. Because they want to try and create a reputation so that people will stay far off. Alright? So that was the so-called Chinese, Tawada. Tawada for that. Right? So, that was Mawa Aba, the so-called Chinese. Now we have... Right. A good night. Well, this is the, the boss here. The head serpent. You understand? He's the most subtle beast in the field. And remember, he's called the most subtype, which means have plenty subtype, but he is just the best out of all of them. So all of them subtype, from Chinese to Arabs to Indian, well, we call them East Indian in the good night. Um, the Syrian, Assyrian, all of them. But the so-called, this one is so-called white people, because they're really white enough. The pink or reddish. You understand? There's nothing like a so-called white man. He's really pink. Yeah, that's because his blood is right on his skin. He has no melanin. Go ahead. Yeah, that's like um, Genesis 25, 25 say the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. That's right. Up to today, they still call them rednecks in Texas. That's it. Because you know they them one slap. In fact, you don't even want to slap him. If he, if he, if he have a thought, his skin getting red. He get mad, his skin get red. You know we have a thing where say your blood on the right on the skin? If he get vexed, he whole face red up. And they want to tell me. Now it's not our history. But they want to say that them white people build pyramids. You can't even walk out five minutes in your son and you want to build pyramids? Nah. That, that, that is showing the, the, the so-called white man so subtitled. So deceiving that if you're fooling the Africans who build the pyramids, that they didn't build it and they build it. That the white man built it and they didn't build it. That's how good this. That they could fool the people who actually build the pyramids and tell them now, nah, all of them do it. We build it. You understand? That the world believe in that white people build the pyramids. All the movies, all the Egyptians white. There's a movie still like, yeah? There's a movie called um um, that kind of Egyptian movie, um, Gods of Egypt, right? This movie came out about a few years ago. Now you have a movie called Gods of Egypt, and every single cast member except probably about one white, all the gods white. And when you look at the Egypt and all the artifacts, all them gods black. So then something wrong. God of Sabaria. Yeah. Um Well, you're still up there. So, we have a so-called white man. So-called, as the rightfully says, because he's not actually white. Yeah. He's not actually white. His biblical name is Edom and Esau, or Idumia. Right? So like I don't think um Ben set up put in this one. His biblical name is I think it's I is Idomia or um I Edom. No, yeah, Edom, I, Esau. Yeah. But also call him I think I I Domia. Right? So like him, so like I pull up that spelling properly. I want to get the correct spelling. 
c'est là que les mafieux vont pour la première fois um, Idomia ou de la même femme Idom, à cause de la city. Il y a une copie du papa Spelling. Right? IDU. 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 Right? Ok, on est là. Right, il y a ta IDUMIA. Right? That is also the other, the name that is also used in the scriptures to describe the so-called white man. And then during the, during the time of Christ, these so-called people slithered their way into power. Not just through the Romans, but also through the other side um, um, in, and coming into power. Because there are other tribes, there are different tribes of the so-called white man. Of Edom or Esau, who is the forefather of the so called white man. Alright? So here, are, this is the description of the most subtle beast in the field. That spirit of the so called white man is so deceptive. He comes in love, I come in peace. First, he got him, him, trick E.T. You understand? He can trick aliens and all. First, he got So he trying all out to rise in power. Right, so we have the so-called white man. His name is pronounced Adawam. Right, Adawam. Right, in the Hebrew here, is Adawama, but it's Adawam because of the connector. Right, connecting it to. So we have the most subtle beast or subtle race of people on the planet. And could somebody pull um, so like a Malachi 1? At the book of Malachi, we give the prophecy of the so called, right? And I think it's Isaiah 14 and 12. Um, prepare slaughter. Ah. 14 and 12, 14 and 22. Right? Back to shop. Oh, yeah. So what? Right, so we just we just do this one and I think that one. Right, so we have so we have Malachi, right? Malachi one, and somebody pull the word in Isaiah. All right, so go ahead, it's lucky. Malachi. Yeah, now that will give you the description of um, the the book of Malachi, chapter one and verse one. So lucky, Malachi or Amos? Yes, Amos. I say in the book of the Lord, the of Malachi. No, uh, Amos. Right? It's it's the prophecy for Esau. So like yeah, and see Right, yeah, that's it. To what? Right? Go ahead. Book of Malachi, chapter one and verse one. Mm -hmm. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Mm -hmm. Verse two. I have loved you, say the Lord. Yet yet ye say. Wherein hast thou loved us? Mm -hmm. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Mm -hmm. And the Lord, and the Lord, and thus say the Lord, yeah. yet I love Jacob. Yet he what? Yet I love Jacob. Right. And hated Esau. And hated Esau. Now Paul quoted the same Old Testament scripture in Romans 9 and 13. You understand? So which means Paul was very very much aware now if Paul teaches God to love everybody why would he bring up this you understand because he knew and understand that they were not his people and God did not Christ and come for everybody right go ahead and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the, for the dragons of the wilderness mm -hmm. verse 4 whereas Edom said we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw them. But he will what? They shall build, but I will throw them. That is why this so-called white man kingdom is fallen. It fell at Rome fell, had a great fall, and America, Babylon, so like it? Sorry? Yes, yeah, Greece. Well, yeah, it was Greece first, then Rome to water, 
And when those kingdoms fall, those kingdoms, when, when Rome fell, it split into about, uh, I think it's seven, seven or eight kingdoms. You understand? That's how we get, you know, um, so called small Greece and, and um, Britain and them the Swedish and all these other small European countries or tribes. After Rome fell, they broke up and formed all these here. Yeah, so this is where all these other nations started to come up, which is still Esau. Right? Go ahead. They shall build, mm -hmm. but I will throw them. Right? And they shall call them. Mm -hmm. The border of wickedness. The what? The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Now the so-called white man is wicked. And, and a different kind of wicked because why? It's so deceptive. And we see with the native Indians, we see it with our, our, our brothers. Um in the slave trade. I think it's somebody said I think it's the officer Barry, you know, I think um if not you somebody has brought out over 400 treaties or close to 400 yeah, treaties yeah, yeah. that the so-called white man made with the native Indians and he broke every single one of them. Even today, the same lands that he gave them for reservation, he's taking it back now. Because why? He's seeing the hard riches, that oil and whatever other minerals, taking away the lands and the rights of these native Indians, our brothers. Right. You understand? So this perfect fitting perfectly the biblical description of these nations so we have the so-called white man right his name is pronounced Adawam his biblical names are so-called Edom Esau or the Mount of Esau or Idumia right that Idumia I think that name came more later down to um, um, Christ's time right name of some of the cities and areas Right, this was more used around that time, but this is just a same biblical description of the same people and all those tribes associated. Right, again, it's Ada Wam Wama, but it's Ada Wam. All right, so I think for tonight we will lock it off here and we're going to continue this next, um, next week and give the breakdown of these nations who we live around. And every nation under the sun, you understand, is described here. And all these nations had a part to play in our destruction and in slavery. You understand? I also want to give a hand to Officer Matt Kwayak and Officer Maikwa for locking down the Hebrew class. You understand? You all did an excellent job. Excellent, excellent job in putting on this here for the people to see and understand who these nations are. You understand? And, um, you know, really try to, you know, get the whole gist. And lay man, you know, they, they really did a good job in putting everything together. You understand? Yeah. Right, so, uh, yeah, we got, we'll cut off that here. And let's give it up to priest and officer Barrier. Security announcements. We are the ISUBK out of One West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Under Commanding General Yohanna. New rules for brothers and sisters. When a new brother or a sister comes into the school, they are off limits for six months. They are to be saluted only. They are here to share themselves of the world. After six months, if a brother or a sister has an interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or a sister. There is another six months in which the brother or sister will court each other. After the six-month period, the brother or sister will get permission from the head to marry. Tithes, which is a commandment, you can find this in Numbers 18 and 21 and Malachi 3, 8 to 10. Means tent in Hebrew and is pronounced Mayashira. 10% of every penny 
of any increase the Lord gives you, you give to the treasury department or teacher. Priest fund, free will offering for priests, not mandatory. Whatsoever amount you would like to give, upcoming holy convocation, memorial blowing of trumpets, the first day of the seventh month, Tuesday, September the 17th, 2020, you can find this in Leviticus 23, 24 to 25. Remind Akiam and Aquatiam to check on social media such as isupk.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and so on for ISUPK events and materials. If a brother wants to be a trooper in the school, then he is to start wearing all black, which includes black boots, light shoes, light pants, like headbands or scarf. And with that we say, imagine. Let's give the teacher one courtesy salute. I imagine Shabbat. I imagine Barak. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yerushalayim Yahweh Ba Hashem Yerushalayim Yahweh Ba Hashem Yerushalayim Class dismissed.